Okay, I know what you're thinking. No, I'm not actually 20 feet tall, but today I'm gonna show you how to look like it with a little help from this small but mighty robot, the Cinnabot Mini. This little guy is the key to making giants. Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we're venturing a bit more into advanced MoCo land with a technique called scaling. First, what is scaling? Scaling is when you alter the size, position, or rotation of a camera move to create some pretty cool illusions. I want to show you a few examples from two brilliant spots that demonstrate several different ways that scaling can be applied. The first is from the Paris Winter Olympics and Paralympics for the brand Omega. They did such a brilliant job blending iconic locations all around Paris with athletes from the games in such a unique way. We get to see miniatures, giants, and a live tennis match unfolding inside a painting on the wall. This next spot is for the brand G-Star, and it features giants roaming a city wearing denim. Talk about making a massive impact and featuring your clothing in a way that typically only exists in our imagination. The two things that really sell it for me are the use of slow motion in combination with scaling, since giants at that scale would appear to move slower in real life, and the second is the lighting, which they really nailed. I love this shot where Cara Delevingne stands up slowly, and we can see that the sunlight that's being cast on her body is actually being cut off by a nearby building. In real life, they probably just used a flag or a box or something of that shape, but this type of careful consideration really helps sell the composite by cementing her in the world. From a high level perspective, all you really need is a background plate, a good camera track of the plate, and a way of exporting the camera track as an FBX file as that's currently the standard and it works really well in Flare. There are some really handy options when importing moves into Flare, which I use quite frequently. The first is the ability to automatically translate and rotate the move to the camera's current position on import. If you don't do this, you'll just need to manually align the move, which doesn't really take that long, but it's just something to consider. When you're compositing, the camera height is incredibly important. So what I typically do is start by piloting the camera to the right height and orientation that I want the move to start at. And then I just check these two boxes to translate and rotate the move to the camera on import. And now I just need to add some track and focus keyframes and start shooting my passes. In order to keyframe the track base, just make sure that you're in Cartesian priority. This just basically tells Flare that the camera path takes priority so that you can add keyframes to the track axis, which is our master axis in this case, without having any effect on the camera path, which is exactly what we want. Pay attention to the target tracking mode that you're in when you import as well. Um, in this case, I just had a one node camera, which automatically put me into pan tilt target tracking. This means that I don't have a target path for the focus to follow, so we just need to switch our focus mode to focus follows object so that we can add some keyframes. Whenever you're compositing and you intend to rotoscope or key out your subject, it's typically best practice to keep them sharp the entire time so that way your edges are nice and clean. Being able to run the move in Cartesian priority so I can add track keyframes or change the focus mode so that it can run independent of the move is one of the reasons that I love Flare. I feel like I have complete control over how every aspect of the robot runs. If you're interested in a breakdown of how the intro shot was created so that you can learn how to track footage in After Effects, import it into Blender, and export the FBX move data for Flare, then just let me know down in the comments below, and if we get enough interest, I will gladly put something together for you. With motion control, because of the ability that we're able to replicate the same camera move at different scales, orientations, or speeds, we're able to pull off these complex illusions and give our audience a more immersive and dynamic experience by adding camera motion to them. Just to give you a sense of how well this works, the intro shot has not been stabilized in any way, and I literally just used a magic mask in Resolve to cut myself out, created a pretty weak shadow that needs some work, and slapped a lot on it, just so that you can get a sense of how well things line up right out of the box. Just a couple of final tips I'll leave you with. Uh, make sure that your focal lengths match or you'll have to manually scale your footage, which is something that I learned the hard way. And make sure that your camera height is correct in relation to the floor, not just to Flare's zero point. Uh, unless you have taken the time to update your kinematics in Flare after leveling your track, there's a chance that your height might be a little bit different than what the numbers are showing in the software. Uh, so just take the extra time, bust out a tape measure, and measure the nodal point of the lens all the way down to the ground. And if you do this and you take the time to prepare on the front end, you can save yourself a lot of time and headaches in post. So that's it, that's scaling in a nutshell. It's weird, it's wonderful, and it's just another reason why MoCo opens up a whole world of creative possibilities. And if anyone needs a giant Ben to stomp through their next music video, all right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks again for tuning into MRMC Academy. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. And if you are, just go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. 
And if you have any questions or comments or you'd like to see a step-by-step -step tutorial, then let me know down in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.